Hi everyone, Pi Sam. Welcome to another inbox review. Before we get started, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification, give us a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below if you want. Question, comment, whatever. I answer them all and read them all, so make sure you do that. Um, this is a kit I saw re well it announced re release was it earlier in the year, I think. Um, it's supposed to be something I've wanted to do for a while. I do like this car, to Jaeger Master Schemes, who doesn't? Uh, when I saw it was going to be re released, I thought, excellent. The older versions of this kit were going for silly money on eBay, and this has been re released at an amazing price. Even the re released kit, um, if I go back in time, this was released in 1976, it's a year older than me. Um, it was re released in 2009 and re released probably last week, I think it was, or this week. We got delivery straight away. Um, when the re release comes with photo etch, cartograph decals, got the original kit, which has got working steering, working suspension, full detailed engine. Uh, it's £120. You can buy it direct from myself and Lee at umpretail.com. I'll put the link in the description down below. We've got four of them in stock, so if you want one, don't dilly dally. Make sure you head over there for £120 for a 12 scale Porsche with all those features. In my opinion, is a bit of a bargain to be honest. And I've been itching to get my hands on one of these. It landed yesterday, and here's my review. So, like I say, it's an older kit. I've not really looked through it properly. I looked at the chrome. Uh, it was the one part I really wanted to see what it was like. Uh, and I'll give my thoughts in a minute when we go through the review. Um, but for the bargain price, it is. Um, it's an older kit. We're going to see how it stands up today. So this is but so some newer kits today. So let's dive straight into the review and have a look and see what we've got. So as this thing won't fit in camera, <laughs> before we go overhead, well, a little bit of chat in the box. So it's huge. It's literally two foot by eighteen inches, sixty by forty centimeters. It's a big box. Storing this is going to be fun. Getting a camera shot. I mean, literally, it's blocking. I'm blocking it. Uh, it won't fit in the overhead. So we'll have a little chat of what it is. It's going to be fun to store as well. I'm going to, have to find somewhere for it. So beautiful Jägermeister Porsche. Who doesn't like Jägermeister schemes? They are wonderful. Um, on the front seat, you get the photo edge parts included on this, and they are worthy addition from what I've seen. Uh, comes with cartograph decals as well. And um, yeah, cartograph over Tamiya decals, I'll take cartograph any day. So nice little extras, but it's your typical Tamiya box, just a lot bigger than usual. Um, <laughs> and that's it really, it's a box, it's got pictures of the cars on the side, and that's about it really. But I thought I'd just run through it because we can't get it in shot on the camera. So, let's go to me now. Okay, so this thing's that big, it won't even fit in shot. There's my hands, this box is huge, it is like literally two foot by ooh, 18 inches or 40 by 60 centimeters it is huge so it isn't going to fit in shot so we can't look at the box here so we'll go back in time before this bit and look at it there easy thing to do we open it up everything's packed in little sections as we can see the body's nice and securely packed inside this protective cardboard and uh, all the other bits and bobs are in here as well so i'm going to put this to one side and we're going to pick uh, bags as we go and go through them uh, pretty quickly we're not going to dwell um, we'll get the body out first have a quick look at that and then pick all the parts and go from there so if we grab the body first there we go it's all nicely wrapped up in here Tammy has lovely staples And there we go. Now, like I say, this is a 1976 mould, I'm uh, led to believe from my resources. And um, if it's that old, it still looks phenomenal. It does look really good. So let's have a look at what's going on. So we've got a bit of tape, which is holding bits together. I'm not sure what, but we will find out. It's that, it's all the new underneath on. Let's get those to one side for safekeeping. There we go, this is the upper from the lower. So we look at the lower part first. So the chassis, it's not bad. It's a bit rough in places. You can tell it's an older mold. 
but it's still really good quality. Um, everything's molded nice, the raised and recessed detail is good. It's not too bad at all. So we can see it is date stamped 1976 just in there. But overall it looks good. Um, how does it marry up to the chassis? I assume this is going to screw in place somehow. But yeah, that's fine. No problem at all. So like I say, even though it's older, the detail is still pretty good. Um... A few ejector pin marks again, probably be hidden. I don't know, uh, they may need dealing with later on, but we'll see about that. The body shell itself is huge, it is absolutely huge. I'll give it that very impressive. Again, molded well. You got some pretty vicious mold seams that I need to be taken care of, but that's the same with any carcass. Just there, you can see them. Ah, and this comes off as well. Yeah, so that's why it was taped on. There we go. So the front end all comes away. Ah, now that is pretty cool. There we go. So you've got the front section there. Jaw comes away. So there are seam molds, seam lines in the exact same place you got on a 24 scale car. And a quick run over of a sander, and they'll be dealt with. So nothing out of the norm. Like I say, for an old mold, it is pretty clean. It really is. So that's the front section, back section. Again, just the usual mold seems to take care of. They run along the top, just there, and down the edge of the door, down the back rear bumper. But overall, not bad, but this thing is huge. If I can grab a Tamiya bottle, there's a Tamiya clear green. You can see how big this thing is. It is huge, it really is. But I'm impressed for an old mold that's 43 years old, it's a year older than me. It's a really clean body. Very nice. And um, yeah, once this thing's built up, that's going to be a very, very impressive model. So does that clip in there? It does. Yeah, there's little connection points at the top. So hopefully you can pull this off and show um, all the inner workings, which would be pretty cool if you can. Right, let's have a look at clear parts. These can always make or break a kit. There is a masking set out there. Hero Boys made one for it. So I'll be grabbing one of those. The clear parts, they're not the best. They're not the clearest. They're not the most optically great. But for the size of the kit and the age, they're perfectly acceptable. There is no drama there at all. Um, lots of clean up, but it's out of view of where you're going to see it. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just take your time on it, and you shouldn't have any issues at all. Big pieces of glass, I mean, really big pieces of glass. They're not the worst, but they're not the best. You can see there's the light catches that screen at the back. Not the perfect, but for the age of it, it's perfectly good. I've seen newer car kits that have come up with worse. And if we bring it up from a distance, yeah, it's still pretty good. Magnification's not too bad. Don't know why I judge glass like that, bro, I always do. And yeah, no problems there at all. I'm going to pop that back in the bag. I always do with the clear parts. All these bits will be going back in their bags. So I'll be keeping them all today. Sometimes I get a little bit lazy and don't bother, but those will be. Chrome parts. Now, I was looking at these last night through the bag, and they're not overly chrome. They're a little bit bent. Or it's supposed to be, I don't know. I don't think so. But yeah, the chrome... Hmm. It's, it's more of a satin chrome than an actual high shine, so it's not too in your face, but there are some pretty vicious seam lines to deal with that down there. The likes are down there. I can zoom in. That are gonna have to be dealt with anyway, so um stripping them, sanding them, priming, respraying will probably be the best course to go. But if you chose to keep them, it wouldn't be the end of the world. The chrome is not that bad. It's the seam lines that let it down. Bit annoying that that's bent. Um, I don't get that. It's supposed to be. I doubt it. But it is. Nothing's damaged. Everything's still on the sprue. So that's not a real issue. 
Got another bag. So in here we have um, what looks to be part of the roll cage. We've got the, the bonnet or hood and the doors as well, the outer doors. So we've got the roll cage in there. So bodywork, this is something I'm never keen of. Part that just held by two sprueler cases points at the back and another one should have been put at the front here. Uh, not a real fan of parts that I flap around, so be careful of that. But again, plastic's clean. No flash. No real issues. There's a few... There's a few sink marks in the door. Is it a sink mark or is it just where the plastic's thin? Hmm. Hard to tell. But again, all the plastic's clean. The detail is pretty good. Not a huge amount of detail on there. But what there is, it's there. And it's pretty cool. It's mad. The, 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 the bonnet <laughs> is just absolutely huge. Monstrous. Right, we've got photo etch, we'll save that for later. Wheels, let's have a look at the wheels. And these are chromed as well. Now these are more of a high shine. So that, that other one has been done satin for a reason. Let's get that out of there. So as you see, these have got a bit more shine to them. What's it like? You know what? It's actually pretty damn good. I would be tempted to leave those be. Because that is pretty nice chrome. Um, it's not perfect. But for what it is, that's pretty decent. Hmm. Okay. So are they supposed to have cross hatchings in? It's hard to say because I don't know the car well enough to know should that be there, should that not be there. But overall, that chrome's not bad. I'm quite impressed by that. It's not overly chrome. It's not that thick that it ripples. Um, like getting some of the Revel kits and what have you. So I will be tempted to leave those beers. It's a shame that Scale Motorsport... Is it Scale Motorsport? Scale Productions. Um, doesn't do a 12 scale set of these rims. They may well do. If anyone knows of any aftermarket for this kit, let me know. Uh, I'd be interested in seeing it. Because aftermarket wheels for this will be killer for it. Absolutely killer. Um, but they look pretty good. Yeah, I'm quite impressed with that chrome, so yeah, I'd be tempted to leave that be. Put a wash in there, detail paint where it needs doing, and I reckon they look pretty good. Right, we've got tyres, so we'll save those again as well. It doesn't even fit on my chair, this thing, my other seat in the cave. It has literally fallen off, I've had to put it to one side, and every time I grab a part out of it, it's trying to fall on the floor. So it just shows you how big this damn box is. Right, we've got more chrome parts. Oh my god. So these are done in that more satin effect again. And we've got some strangely coloured parts. So they must be a different kind of plastic, are they? Sounds like it, but what is it? So let's put that just there. I wouldn't look at the roll cage either. We'll go back to that as well. So we've got a slightly different colour plastic. So this is like a um how can I explain it? It's the kind of plastic you get under real engine bays on like expansion tanks, older cars where they discolour. That, that's what it reminds me of the colour. Where it's a different kind of plastic or something, I don't know, it's hard to tell. But the parts again, all moulded well, there's some nice detail here, I assume that's a fuel tank. Um fan shroud. Got the battery, the battery top, which is quite nicely detailed as well. So again, lots of cool parts on there. Crisply moulded, you know, 43 years old. No drama at all. Spot on. Chrome parts. Right, so another satin chrome parts. We've got all the brake discs. Uh, now these are drilled, but not the right way through. So you could drill them should you want, well, if you wanted to. Um, but the PE ones that come with it will cover it. And to be honest, rather than drilling them, put a wash in them. I think they look better, personally. Um, we've also got radiators or intercooler, is it? Um, gear shifter. And again, the chroming isn't too bad. If you love the first one was better. There's a bit more 
flaws on this. I think stripping, sanding it clean, repriming, repainting will be the other day, especially on this one. I think on the high shine of the wheels, keep that. Um, on these more satin effect, I would strip them because it's neither here nor there. It, it looks okay, but I think if you look at it from a distance, you think, yeah, that doesn't look quite right. So, yeah, for me, I would strip, bleach those, strip them, respray them. The other part that came with that other wheel sprue, and we've got components to the roll cage. So this is the more plastic, plastic, <laughs> the more flexible plastic, sorry. All molded in black. So we've got a roll cage, I'm assuming they're window surrounds, they've got to be, for the door. I don't know, it's hard to tell. But again, no problem. All. Lots of cleanup. Every single one of these cylindrical parts is going to need cleanup. It's the same on any kit. So nothing detracting from this kit at all. But you're just going to have to bear in mind the size of this thing. It's going to take a little bit longer to clean it all up. But again, no problems at all there. Quite a nice roll cage. Pretty well detailed. So you can put some padding on there if you wanted as well. Make it out scratch building, what have you. That will look really good. More bodywork, we've got the engine cover now, or the trunk or the boot, whatever you want to call it. And I'm guessing that's the front bumper, is it? With the air dams in. And again, very nicely done. So that's going to glue in place underneath. Doesn't need any clean up. Doesn't look like it does. No, that's nice and clean out the bags, so that's good. Then I'm assuming we've got there the intakes for there they are so the intake dams for there and then we've got the rear engine cover which again i take it is removable just realized before i said about taking the front of the car to see the engine dirt in the back so yeah that's going to be cool as well so how much the engine is going to be visible through that rear hatch we'll have to have a look at that in a bit but yeah no problems there with those I think the whole thing of this kit is, even for its age, it's just going to be good. We're going to have no issues, really, other than, you know, slightly dodgy chrome in places. But chrome on most kits, unless they're, you know, 2019 or fairly new kit, is always going to give you a little bit of a quandary whether to get rid of it or use it. And it's just one of those things. So, in here we've got brake calipers, we have dashboard, what looks to be the turbo. Indeed it is. Intake hoses. Is that the rear grill for? No, it's not. It's too small. Handbrake lever. So, lots of different components on here. Again, you know what? There's not even a hint of flash. The parts are a little bit rough. I can't even say rough. They're not rough. They're just... I don't know. Not as finely polished as a brand new kit would be. It's probably the easiest way to say it. The fairest way to say it. But, you know, it is an all kit, so that can be for, you know, forgiven. But the calipers look well. Once they're painted up, they look pretty good. And, yeah, again, can't see any dramas at all. Very good kit. Very nice components, even though they're old. Spot on. Next one we have got, there's the grill cover for the engine cover. We've got window wipers. They're quite nice as well. The usual, typical... All molded on, they're actually quite nice detailed. Steering wheel's nice. We've got shock, absor shock absorbers there, we've got the um, steering column, we've got pedals, anti roll bars, um, switches, I assume, for the interior. Distributor cap, it's pretty cool. So we can wire that up, I assume. It did say wine was with the kiss, so wherever you get it all, I don't know, but again, not a hint of flash. Nothing at all. Once they're cleaned up, they're going to look absolutely spectacular. Right, we're coming to the end of the bags now. So, we've got more. These are bodywork slash chassis parts. There's a fair old few parts in this kit. So, we'll start with that and then we'll get to the engine. The engine looks really good. Very, very good. So, that's um, rear bulkhead. Between the engine bay and the cockpit, I think. Take it out to the front, looks like it. Um, we've got a cross member, a few of the bits and bobs, I don't pretend to know what they are. But again, nicely done. 
So when I was saying about rough, it's not rough. But if you look on this bar here, and just look at the edges, you can just see that the plastic's not quite as good as a brand new kit would be. But overall, you know, if you forget about that, primer will probably get rid of 95% of that. Um, if you use like UMP primer, star and res, etc., that will cover that kind of thing up. Or you can just tick a sander to it and give it a good uh, flat and polish, and it'll look great again. But it's nothing detracting from the kit. It's probably just the age of the mold starting to show a little bit of, I wouldn't say were, but age for its uh, life. But again, no problems at all. Actually, half, half the things, I don't know what they are. Um, I just remark on the actual quality of the kit. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Right, engine. Now, this looks good. I was looking at this the other day. And we got some really nice detail here. This thing is going to be great. This will be a little model kit all on its own. Once you get this thing paint cleaned up, glued together, primed and painted in some metalizers, um, that's going to look phenomenal. It's really well detailed. We've got some nice detail on the... Uh, but the side, yeah, the top and bottom of the engine. Gearbox looks great. So yeah, once painted up and given a wash, that's gonna look pretty spectacular. Very, very cool. I do like that. Lots to look at. Got a few. Yeah, again, it's just the seams on the edge of some of the rounded parts. But overall. That looks really good. If I'm quiet, I'm sorry. This is my first time properly looking at this kit. So I'm kind of talking to you guys and looking at it myself to see what I can see and the detail itself. Some of the other kits I've either built before or I know about them because of, you know, I've seen them before, the ones that I review. This one I've never seen before, ever. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed by it, to be honest. For the price, £120 from us, myself and late UMP retail for something this size and of this you know, nature of build, it's, it's a pretty damn good bargain to be honest. Right, now we've got some of the rubberized kind of plastic now. So we are going to get, we've got the boot spoiler, we've got mirrors, so this is the flexible stuff. We had this in the cage room for the Tonyu cover and a few other parts, front spoiler, splitter there. And again, these are really nice quality actually, let's move that one. Very nice quality. Um, with stuff like this, it, it's already got the look and colour of what it's supposed to represent. So, I'll be honest, I'll be tempted to, to not even paint these. The only thing they've got is a little bit of marbling in places. Yeah, so on that boot spoiler there, you can see the marbling just there. That's from the mould. So, yeah, you might have to give things like that spoiler. Something the high, you know, that's going to be seen is in a prominent place. That would probably benefit from a prime over. But really nice, very nicely uh, made. The door handles are good. Wing mirrors are good. Splitter, I guess there's some visors. Oh, it looks really good. Good. And another one. So we've got door cards. Obviously pretty plain in this car. But it does still look to have electric window switches. Assume that's what they are. Um... We've got loads of other bits and bobs. That's a door car. That's a door bin, isn't it? I think by the look of it. Yeah, it's the door bin for the uh, side of the door there as well. Pretty cool. Again, I think they would benefit. Parts like this would benefit from a prime. Parts like this, I think you could quite happily leave as is and leave, use them because there's no. You can't see this texture that's on there as such. Uh, it's literally just where it's been molded. It's the where the plastics have you know set and what have you in that kind of shape but smaller parts like this you could well leave be but those I think they benefit from a paint personally but very cool I do like that I like it a lot in here we've got some piping I assume I am guessing not really much to look at there several pipes that's it and then we got oh look another chrome part a seat and I've got some lights so we're getting through the parts now. I've got to say, of all the videos I do, my reviews are not my favourite. I always feel like I'm boring the absolute bejesus out of people doing this. 
Um, because you're just talking about plastic parts and there's only so much you can say like, wow, this is amazing or it's not very good. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I always feel like I'm just droning on. Anyway, chrome parts, again, these are the more highly chrome parts, as you can see by the shine. The headlight um, reflectors, we've got a couple of flaws inside them. I don't wish it wiped off, there we go. So, again, I would, I would leave those be. They look perfectly acceptable as they are. Real cars of this age, they look like that inside the light reflectors anyway. Uh, we've got the mirrors, which... Do look good, but they've got a bit of hazing around the outer edge. You can see it there. If I catch it just there. So, yeah, you probably get away with using it. There's some caps, center caps, I think. Can't tell. And a few other parts. I think I would leave the headlight reflectors and I'd strip the rest of those and repaint them, to be honest. But very good still. Uh, let's have a look at the lights. There we go. So we got red, not bad, and the amber as well. Huge indicators or instigators. Really nice quality. Yeah, no problems there. Nice and clear, nicely well uh, molded. Really good. And same with the red ones as well. No problems there at all. Don't even need painting. So it saves you a job there already. Right, last bag of actual bits, and then we're on to tyres and screws and all that kind of malarkey. So the seat is huge. There you go. So there's that. And there's a bottle of Tamiya paint inside the seat. So, yeah, very nice. We've got a seat cushion there for the bottom as well. So, again, it's going to need this first bit of flash I've seen on the top of there. There's literally the first bit of flash, and I'll be honest, it'll probably scrape off with my finger have a look yeah for the most part it does run it over with a sponge sander and it will be good paint that up that is screaming to be um, well it depends on what it's made of is it vinyl is it an actual flock seat is it fabric i don't know but that's screaming with some sort of detail i definitely paint this either in a texture paint flock it use micro balloons um if it's vinyl paint it up appropriately but again really nice spot on it's that weird plastic as well very cool um, so now we are left let's have a look we've got instructions and decals now we get to in a bit we've got tire bags and photo etch as well so we have to cut these open so time we can heat seal these we can't do this so we've got some flexible tubing so yeah, flexible tubing. Nasty, nasty seams all along it, so you need to tidy that up if you can. I found sprue cut is the best on the cage room. Just snip along as much as you can and then get a sponge sander in there. And then we've got some intake cooling hoses to take there. Are they for brakes and what have you? And again, three of those all together. Nicely, highly flexible. Smell very weird. Yeah, so another nice little touch to get. And then tires. So big, big tires, as you can see. Hello. Um, you've got mold seam through the middle to take care of. It's only little. So a run over a sander will take care of that, no problem at all. Nice quality tires, They're actually really good. Yeah, no markings on them. Whether we get decals or what have you, I don't know. Um, we'll see. So yeah, no problems with the tires. So there's two of them. We've got two more in another bag. Let's pop all this malarkey in there. And then in here we have hoses and springs. Wow, there's a lot of them. Front tires. Screws and nuts. Screws and bolts. And one of Tammy's little screwdrivers. So again, same tires as the back, just thinner. That little mold seam line through the middle. And again, no problem there at all. They're really nice, actually. Nice and clean. Give them a wipe over. I have no problem with those. In the bags, I'm not going to open this in there. We've got some longer threaded um, bolts. So they're probably threaded for um, a quarter of their length. 
so a smooth one end off halfway um, down they've become a shredder or a quarter of the way down then we've got some of your standard Tamiya bolts in there in here we've got some smaller ones along with some nuts various sizes and some washers too so not a massive amount of screws and bolts with this one not a massive amount and in here i'm not going to open it i don't want to open these parts we've got springs because i believe the suspension's fully working on this we've got some copper wire and we've got some tamiya tubing three different sizes there as well so again not bad at all so there we go there's that and that is all of the actual parts of the kit so i think for the money you get an awful lot in there to be fair um, for 120 quid, there's a lot in that kit. Oh, right. so the re release kit, which was re released in 2009, I think it was, came with this photo etch set. Maybe there's a date on there, maybe there's not. And in here is Tamiya's typical thick steel PE, I believe it is, which makes no difference on this because none of this is going to need to be uh, bent. We've got our seatbelt. Buckles, harnesses, release, etc. We've got grills, more grills, and brake disc um, as well. So, as you can see, nice detail there. Again, we've got the cross drilled pattern on the discs. Um, I think they look great once I've got to wash them um, rather than having them drilled all the way through. And again, that's a lovely bit of photo etch. Very finely done. The grill there is absolutely lovely really nice so again nice detail apart to get it's going to modernize it a little bit in places and certainly improve the look of it overall we're in our space now i've got parts everywhere all over the bench so let me zoom back out and we will grab the paperwork and instructions out of the box now let's have a look what we've got because we grab everything so as i said before Nice little touches that body fits in there perfectly. You see the indentations for the wheel arches? And it sits in there absolutely perfectly. So the body is kept really safely well held in there. So in here we have the Tamiya, let's have a look, information slip. Important information with concern this kit. So it's basically don't, you know, crush your hamster to death while building it. Or, you know, ski off a building or paraglide down a mountain while reading the instructions, just a typical daft instructions you always get. You've got Tamiya Tech Tips, which sounds interesting. And basically it's running you through the very basics of um, cleanup on tank wheels, drilling ship holes, gluing ship holes, pouring CA glue into stuff, cutting more parts off, things that I don't know what they are test fitting basically if we look at it properly we're cutting off parts removing excess plastic using different types of cement um, test fitting removing metal plating different types of paints well that's good and uh, the box is going for a button and using spray paint so lacquer paints are here uh, lacquer paints have been mentioned in the kit which is good um, so the LPs and the TS the acrylic range and the enamel range as well and uh, using spray paints you shake it twice according to that shake shake and then spray from 15 to 20 centimeters away. So yeah, handy or not, however you look at it. We've got our decals, which we'll look at in a second. We've got our uh, sprue layout sheet, which again is quite handy. So it shows you just what is included in the kit. Spot on. And our instructions. So it's your typical Tamiya layout. We've got a bit of information on the car on the front. I'll bring it up. You can do the standard. Have a read if you want. It's just there. Pause and have a read if you want. Oh, I'll bring it all over so you can read it all. Duh. Um, picture of the car on the front. And then we open it up. We've got recommended tools. We've got paints. Great to see the LPs listed in the paints. So that's very good. So TS Orange is their, uh, TS12, sorry, Orange is the Jägermeister Tamiya spray colour. You can pick it up from various other places as well. Uh, but really good to see the LPs um, linked in there as well. I do like that. Uh, we've got more information on painting, applying decals, prime and undercoating, photo edge parts, uh, clean off photo edge parts, and using instant cement as well, CA glue. Um, straight on to cautionary tails. Um, this dude holding the sign. 
and then we're onto construction. So starting inside the car, uh, so you've got a mask and spray the chassis, you're assembling all that first. For me, I go straight to bodywork, we'll get the bodywork started, primed, uh, painted, decaled, cleared, that can then sit to one side, and then we'll crack on with this. So I'm assuming the chassis, yeah, it's TS12, you have to paint all that as well. The roll cage, um, I would guess it would be TS12, but I don't know, we'll find out. But it's a proper book, it's not a fold that one, which is great. It's a good size, it's full A4 by the look of it. Typical, just your typical industry standard Tamiya instruction book. Uh, no problem at all. So it's got workable steering, it's got a workable steering rack on this as well, which is really cool. Uh, we've got all our brakes there, it's pretty complex the way they build up, actually really nice. Front arms are there, and then we go to the back, there's part of our working suspension there, which is really, really cool. So, the actual working components of the car are very good. This is what those threaded bolts were for, for the suspension. So we're building up pretty well, pretty cool. I built Tamiya's uh, 12 scale Caterham um, the, early this year, and that was fantastic to build. It was just like building a real kick car. I love that thing. Um, hopefully this will be a similar experience, and it'll look... Um, It'll look really good once built up. So the suspension works, the steering actually works as well. Um, what else have we got? Rear suspension, uh, anti-roll bar, engine assembly starts here as well. That's going to look so cool. That's one of the parts I'm really looking forward to doing. Got distributor cap there as well and all your uh, HT leads there. So again, it's going to look really well detailed. There's our cooling fan shroud. What's it saying to do to that? Let's have a look. So it's saying, leave those, that colour, that colour we had, that off beigey, browny, white colour plastic, is saying not to paint there. So obviously it gives the impression of the plastic on the car. Um, air filter boxes, turbocharger, there's our HT leads. Really cool. Really, really cool. That engine's going to look phenomenal. It really is. I'm hoping you can see a lot of it through the back of that car. Um, attached underneath, screws together, which is cool. Cool, cool. Uh, and then we've got that rear uh, bulkhead in the back as well. Dashboard, loads of detail on the dashboard. There's our steering components there as well. I didn't see those parts. They must be in plastic, are they? F, F, F sprue. So you need these are handy. Oh yeah, they are. So the steering parts are in plastic. Okay, would have thought they'd have been metal, but okay. Oil tank, battery in the front. So you will see that if you take the front end off, which it should allow you to do anyway. So there is some detail on the front. Again, quite complex on the oil tank, the way it's gone with the hose and the detail. Battery's going to look really cool as well, especially if you saw some sort of decal for it. You know, age period. Seatbelt assembly, again, Probably won't use the stuff that comes with the kit. I don't know, actually, I might do it. Probably look better in this, to be fair. Um, but if not, you can also saw, always source your own ribbon or what have you to go with it. Seat, that's going to look very cool as well. You need to figure out what to say. An LP3 XF1, so flat black. Okay. So we'll have to look at real references of the car to figure that out. Roll case is actually in semi gloss black. Fair enough. So that's an drama. We've got the front cross brace there as well. Attaching the seatbelt to the roll cage. Rear lights. Um, yeah, okay. Pretty tr tricky masking around the side of the lights, but it shouldn't be too bad. Getting the windows in place. That's going to be interesting to see how well they fit in. The size of things. There is a masking set out there for them, so I will be grabbing that. There's the uh, hood bonnet there as well. Or, um, ah, okay. So that part we had before wasn't a splitter, it's the black part to sit on top of the bumper. I should have known that. Door assembly, so there's our window surrounds. My god, you have to be very, very careful with those. So do they... Hang on, let's have a look. No, they don't. That's actually the window painted. So do the parts go over that? Talking to myself, bear with me. Hmm. Hard to say, but okay. D11. Let's have a look at D again. D are the clear parts. Were those other bits that we had earlier? Those things there. Um, ah, okay, they're, they're not used. By the look of it. 
yeah so they would be actual components for the windows but they're not used in this kit okie doke uh, we've got the intakes with those hoses we had before, the big pieces we had earlier, getting our wheels assembled, TS21, so it's gold in it. So I would mask that up, spray that, leave the rest of it chrome, assemble it, put a wash on it, job done. Get the tyres on, wing mirrors, side bars, uh, side bars, uh, side strips, window wipers, and then our markings, which we'll look at in a second. Now it's been re-released this, so it gets the cartograph decals uh, and the photo etch as well, which is a real nice touch. And there's our markings there as well. So typical Tamiya instruction book. Nothing in there that's going to worry you at all. And nothing to give you any problems whatsoever. Decals. So these are our decals and our seat belt. So I know this fabric, it can be a little bit tricky to work with. Which is why I'm thinking maybe we ditch it and have a look elsewhere. So let's look at the decals first. So cartograph printed decals. Ooh, which are nice. Very nice. So again, not a huge amount of decals on this. Uh, mainly just Jägermeister uh, markings. So we're getting two different cars, 24-25. So let's see what we've got. We've got instrument uh, display. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Decals. That's the word. Decals. Instrument decals. We've got some Hmm. Yeah, okay, right, okay. I'm looking for what detail decals are off all the components inside the car. It's quite hard to see. Basically, the instruments, that's it, really. A few warning placards that are going to go inside, and the rest of it is sponsorship, but those decals look wonderful. They really do look nice. Made by Cartograph, they're going to give you no problems at all. And yeah, really nice, crisp. Not massively thick, all in register. Colours are vibrant and good. There's no flaws on them, so they're not going to give you any problems whatsoever. So that is absolutely beautiful. And then our last bit. Oh, we'll just destroy the bag. Is our seatbelt. So these are on like a fabric. You have to cut them out yourself. I'm not a fan of them massively, so if it was me, I would probably replace with my own ribbon of you know the appropriate size. Maybe try and cut out these logos and stick those on over the top. That's probably what I would do. But zoom in a touch, you can see a bit better. So I'm not a fan of this. Once you cut them, they fray a bit strange. They're just not the nicest stuff to work with. It should be self adhesive. It is, as you can see. So for me, I would probably cut those out, use my own, and stick those over the top. But if you choose to use them, they are usable. I've used them before. Um, they look just as good, to be fair. But I think for myself, I would probably go for ribbon. And there we go. So that's the kit. Let's go back to me with some final thoughts. That's it. There's the review. Um, what do I think? Is it worth the money? Oh, yes. That is worth £120 all day long. You can pay 50 60 quid for modern day kits easy and 24 scale with not even a quarter of the features this kit has and um, for the money that is a bargain of a kit it's huge it's well detailed some of the parts get a little bit of clean up the chrome the wheel chrome the high chrome high gloss chrome is good really good so the wheels will be left alone the headlight reflectors but some of the other chrome the satin finish i'm not quite keen on that look so I'll probably strip that and do it. But overall, the chrome, really good. Clear parts, they're all right. They're not the best. They're not the worst. So they're acceptable. No problem at all. Get yourself that masking set from Hero Boy. And that'll save you time doing it. Bodywork looks great. Typical seam line still with, just on a bigger scale, which we'd expect. So no problems with the body. And it's nice to be able to get that front end off as well. So you can show some of the inner workings as well. Hoping you can see lots of that engine through the back. If not, you'll see it underneath. Um engine looks great that's going to look really nice painted up and a little bit of a wash in there as well so that's going to look great interior again looks great work and steering a nice touch work and suspension a brilliant touch the included photo which can add a bit of detail in places where it probably needs it nowadays and the cartograph decals are just yeah they're definitely a plus in any kit to be honest because you should have no dramas off those at all and they're going to lay down absolutely spot on so really really impressed by that kit for a 43-year-old kit, um, 
I wouldn't say it's really showing its age all that bad at all. Um, you know, I've seen newer kits released that are worse than that, so that's pretty good going. It just shows you how way ahead of the time Tamiya is and was back in the day, especially back in the day. Uh, definitely market leaders when it comes to the kit. So, you know, £120, go grab one. It's a blatant plug. We sell them at umpretail.com. We sell them because I wanted one, so Lee got more because he knew I wanted one. And we got them while we were there, so... That's that. We've got four of them in stock, £120, £119. So if you want one, go over and grab one while they're there. Um, but yeah, I think it's been an enjoyable build. I think I'll tackle this in the new year. I think uh, we'll get Christmas out of the way, and I'll probably tackle this in the new year and see what we can do with it. So there we go. Thanks for watching today. Like I said in the video halfway through, I'm not that keen on doing reviews. I always find them boring because you're just waffling on about plastic, seams, flash, and everything. But people want to see what's in the boxes, and a lot of these reviews get a lot of you know criticism or what have you because it's not a review because you're not putting the kit together. No, it's not because that'd be a build review. This is an inbox review. I'm reviewing what's in the box. So that's it. We're going through what's in the box, what do the parts look like. I'll build this at a later date, and we'll talk about an adventure update as a post-build um, review, as I do with all my kits. Um, so yeah, if you don't like it, don't watch it. It's a bit late now because you've got to the end. You've already watched it, but hey, who cares? There we are. Thanks for watching today. Hope I haven't bored you to death. Um, check out International Scale Model Facebook page and forum. UPRetail.com where you can buy this kit from. Uh, live at the bench page for the offer for the offer for the live show. Uh, offer hangout group for the offer hangout as well. And check out my Paul Ison modeling page where all my personal modeling work is shared. Make sure you sub to the channel, give a thumbs up, comment, and hit a little bell notification so you get notified of all the videos. And there we go. Thanks for watching today. Catch you all later. Bye bye.